So welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Online Meetup. It's the 14th of October and we're celebrating Hacktoberfest this month. This is the Docs and More uh, presentation. We're going to share with you how you can contribute to Jenkins as part of Hacktoberfest. Uh, Hacktoberfest is a great experience and the Jenkins community has used Hacktoberfest for a number of years as a way to help people as they want to contribute to Jenkins and to help open source. So let's talk about who our presenters are today. Uh, first, we've got Oleg Nanashev. Uh, Oleg is based in Switzerland. Uh, it's an international community today presenting. He's a Jenkins contributor. He's a member of the Jenkins governing board. He's been involved with Jenkins for many, many years and has contributed significantly in many, many different ways. Uh, I'm Mark Waite. I'm based in Colorado in the United States. Uh, I've been involved in Jenkins for a number of years as well. We've also got Jonathan Moraes with us from Brazil. Uh, Jonathan is a contributor to the documentation special interest group with interest in code and how to do effective documentation as code. He's been a great help in the doc special interest group. We're so grateful for him. We've also got Vlad Silverman joining us. Vlad is here from California, and we're looking forward to his presentation as well. It's great to have all, all of our presenters here. We love Hacktoberfest and are grateful for it. It's a good thing for us. It's a good thing for you. Thanks for being willing to help us. Now, today's agenda, we're going to have me do these brief intros, and then Oleg's going to share several different ways that you can contribute to Jenkins and Hacktoberfest. Jonathan is going to then highlight some of the things we did to prepare for Hacktoberfest so that you would have a good experience. After that, Vlad will talk about how to build the Jenkins site locally so that you can do documentation test and evaluation on your own computer. And I've got some a session ready to show how you could do plug-in documentation migration from the wiki to GitHub. And at the end, we'll do question and answer. Now, what we'd like to do is encourage you to ask your questions using the webinar Q&A system. That helps us so that we can answer questions. We'll choose to answer them live or answer them in chat. Um, we are open to your questions, open to suggestions and ideas. And at the conclusion of our session, we'll stop the recording and then invite you to talk with us directly. Oleg, I think we're ready for you. Okay, uh, let's begin. Yeah, so um, uh, did we go through, through this slide already? Oh. Okay, let me just cover it. Um, so yeah, October 1st, 2020 is quite an exceptional year because uh, this year the vast majority of October 1st happens uh, online due to obvious reasons. Uh, even before Hacktoberfest was a worldwide event, uh, during the uh, one month, uh, there uh, were um, hundreds of uh, various events happening across the world, and everyone was able uh, to contribute uh, remotely as well. Uh, this year, the main focus is on remote, um, and uh, basically the framework remains the same. So you can submit four pull requests, and uh, after that you get a t-shirt. Um, or now uh, yeah, you can uh, plant a tree or somebody plants the tree for you if I recall correctly. So it's your choice. And But the idea is uh, quite simple. So you can just click a button, start hacking, register uh, by signing up with your GitHub account. In my case, I'm already logged into GitHub. So for me, it will show my profile, I guess. But uh, if you go here for you, for you, it will uh, show the sign up form where you can register, and after that, you can start contributing. Basically, that's it. Uh, though there is some specific introduced to this year, we will talk about it later. Okay, um, let's talk about uh, the Jenkins project specifically. Uh, so, Jenkins, as many other projects, participates in Hacktoberfest. We started participating actively in 2016 when we published a special page for Hacktoberfest when we started preparing newcomer-friendly issues and promoting the event. And since that, uh, the project has been successfully 
participating uh, in Hacktoberfest. We've got uh, many contributors uh, joining uh, the project and the community during the Hacktoberfest. And, and we invite everyone uh, to participate. Um, your experience with Jenkins uh, doesn't matter. There is a lot of newcomer friendly issues. Uh, there is a lot of opportunities uh, uh, focused uh, not only on code and documentation, uh, but uh, on many other activities. Basically, anything you can submit as a pull request uh, qualifies for Oktoberfest. So this year, we are happy to introduce a, a number of featured projects and uh, also a lot of issues which have been prepared uh, before the event. And we will talk about them today. Okay. Again, uh, anything counts. So Hacktoberfest is built around GitHub. Any repository which is public on GitHub is eligible for Hacktoberfest uh, if it's configured properly. So what it means that all the code, documentation, and also many s code um, instances, for example, infrastructure is code, uh, documentation is code, uh, and uh, many other areas which you can represent as code and find on GitHub, they are also eligible for Hacktoberfest. There is no specific differentiation for that. Uh, in the case of the Jenkins project, uh, almost everything is stored um, in uh, GitHub repositories. Uh, so. Uh, basically, uh, all uh, content we have, uh, design work, artwork, uh, of course, uh, all the code, uh, test suites, etc. All of that uh, is available as code, and hence you can contribute. Uh, many perceive uh, Jenkins as a Java project, and yes, uh, the most of uh, Jenkins is written in Java, but actually it's not only about Java. There is a lot of other technologies you could uh, work on if you're interested. Last year, together with Mark, we did a presentation about uh, contributing to Jenkins. And uh, if you want, uh, you can go to that. Uh, it's public. I can uh, share the link in the chat later. And there you can find a lot of information about what actually interests uh, you. And uh, for Jenkins, we use its uh, vast ecosystem with uh, hundreds of plugins, with uh, many infrastructure repositories, basically for many areas you can find existing projects. So whether you are a Java developer, a Go developer, if you want to try front end, uh, or if you want to write some documentation, you can find something interesting for you. And uh, yeah, if you're interested in a particular technology, just contact us and we will be able to provide a few examples. Today, we are talking mostly about the documentation. So I scroll quickly to the documentation part. Okay, so yep, yeah, you can find some examples here in these slides. Um, yeah, JavaScript, Golang, uh, many other languages. And uh, yeah, today we talk about the, the documentation. So for documentation in the Jenkins project, we uh, use Markdown and ASCII doc. We have a lot of repositories using Markdown as well, GitHub mind Markdown as a documentation language. Uh, the Jenkins website is uh, largely written in ASCII doc. Um, I believe today we will cover both technologies. So Vlad and Jonathan uh, will talk about ASCII doc based documentation. Mark will talk about uh, Markdown based documentation. Um, so, yeah, we will cover that. In addition to these formats, uh, we also have a lot of embedded documentation, um, our components, and there uh, you can find a lot of plain text, uh, plain HTML, and other languages. So, again, uh, any repository can uh, be a good fit. Sorry for this detour. Uh, let's finish uh, with uh, the main presentation so that we have more time for QA later. Okay, where to contribute? Mm, I mentioned uh, multiple times uh, that uh, any repository would qualify. And yes, that's true. But at the same time, um, especially for newcomer contributors, it's important uh, to have uh, uh, clear uh, guidelines, uh, issues, etc. And we did our homework before the Hacktober first started. And we prepared a number of uh, newcomer friendly projects uh, to which you could contribute. And all these projects are uh, considered uh, to be very important to the Jenkins project and the community. Many of them are represented on the public Jenkins roadmap. Uh, so it's not like we found some areas where uh, there are newcomer friendly tickets. Uh, by contributing to these projects, you actually contribute to the Jenkins project goals. 
And uh, here are some examples. So there is Jenkins website with a lot of ongoing documentation improvements and the restructuring. There is Jenkins core, which is basically a foundation of uh, any Jenkins instance uh, running. Then there is a plugin site, which lists information and documentation for uh, all the plugins we provide from the Jenkins project. Uh, there is Jenkins file runner, uh, a portable pass engine. There are a few plugins listed, for example, Prometheus plugin. Actually, we don't have any other plugins listed here as featured projects, uh, but yeah, uh, there are other plugins uh, with uh, GitHub friendly issues. We will talk about how to find them later. Also, we invite uh, everyone to participate in terminology cleanup. So we are cleaning up uh, agent, controller terminology, and uh, other areas. Uh, there is a lot of uh, quick pull requests uh, you can uh, do there. Uh, yeah, again, it helps the project. Also, if you're a designer uh, yeah, in Jenkins, uh, there are multiple ways uh, to just uh, improve uh, the look and feel. For example, uh, you can just contribute artwork, which later can be used in uh, web interfaces on the Jenkins website, on com um, in community projects. Also, if you want uh, to improve um, uh, the existing UIs, you can contribute to themes. For example, there is a recent dark theme uh, for Jenkins, which has been created uh, several uh, months ago, and there are other themes, or you could just contribute uh, to core uh, Jenkins UIs. All of that uh, is possible. And yeah, what else do we have as featured projects? If you're a fan of Kubernetes, uh, we have recently moved uh, Jenkins Helm charts uh, to the Jenkins organization. So now it's a part of the official Jenkins repository and we invite everyone to contribute to the version 3.0 of these uh, charts. Uh, there is a lot of uh, different activities and issues available. And also there is uh, ongoing project for plugin documentation migration. Uh, yeah, it has been uh, available even during the previous Hattoberfest, uh, but yeah, there is still hundreds of plugins to move, so we will appreciate on contributions there. So all these projects are not just uh, tables. You can find that uh, for every project we have published here, we have clear contributing guidelines, list of uh, good first issues you start uh, working on, and also a list of uh, other open issues and uh, documentation which may help you to get started. So you can take any project uh, which is interesting to you and uh, just start working on that. But for new common contributors, it would be uh, the recommendation just to start from one of these projects. If you want to find more, as I said, not everything is listed as featured projects. We also have a number of issue queries uh, where you can find um, issues suggested for Hacktoberfest. So for example, um, uh, in Jenkins Jira, it's uh, the old uh, bug tracker for the project. You can find, oh, just three issues uh, marked for Hacktoberfest. Well, likely we will, we need to do some scrap there. But, uh, okay, if you go to GitHub queries, uh, so many new components uh, now use GitHub uh, as uh, the main issue tracker here, you can uh, find more than 50 issues focusing on uh, different areas. Uh, so you can see that there are some plugins which haven't been listed. For example, Azure Key Vault, uh, Slack plugin, configuration as code plugin, Tikton client, etc., etc. So you can find uh, more projects uh, where you can contribute here. And also, if it's not enough, there, is, uh, there are also common newcomer-friendly issues which haven't been sorted specifically for Hacktoberfest. So here, at least, we have uh, several hundred issues um, and uh, even more good first issues on GitHub. All these issues uh, should provide enough um, uh, information uh, about how to get started and how to contribute. So take a look at them. And uh, again, we will appreciate uh, contributions to all these areas. Uh, did we get any questions so far? We don't have any questions that have arrived yet. Now, I there is one table that I've enjoyed that is the table of fresh issues for, uh, or of, new, of newcomer friendly issues on JIRA that shows things like the Git client plugin has an, a newcomer friendly issue to help me translate tests from JUnit 3 to JUnit 4. So, you had noted, oh, like individual plugins may not say, oh, I'm a featured plugin, mm -hmm. but they, they are still very welcoming to contributions on these newcomer friendly issues. Right. 
So we have hundreds of uh, active repositories in our organizations. And if you contribute uh, some way, you can uh, get uh, initial feedback and reviews. And even if you don't get feedback immediately, it's still not a blocker from contributing there because we have a process which still allows uh, to mark uh, these uh, contributions uh, for Oktoberfest as eligible for the quest. Okay, let's actually talk about that. Yeah, I opened too many links. Okay, so let's uh, get started. Uh, mm, if you want to get started with Oktoberfest, again, you register um, on the website as we discussed before. Then uh, we recommend uh, to join our uh, Gitter channel. This is a channel which you can use for any kind of Q&A. Uh, so if you have any questions, if you are stuck, if uh, there are some organizational uh, problems you would like to sort out, for example, uh, you don't get reviews, etc., uh, please let us know here and we will uh, process it and uh, help you there. And basically, that's it. You start contributing. For contributing, and again, any pull request uh, to any GitHub repository uh, counts, uh, but uh, this year there were some changes in the program uh, due to uh, huge traffic uh, of spam pull requests coming to other organizations. So Hacktoberfest org team modified the process and now uh, it's uh, opt-in for Hacktoberfest contributors. Uh, for that, uh, we added additional process so that when you create a pull request, we need to know that it's related to Hacktoberfest so that uh, the Hacktoberfest team can uh, mark it properly as Hacktoberfest accepted pull request so that uh, it counts towards your Hacktoberfest goals. Um, I'll show you how this process works. Again, let's just take a look at um, our featured projects. Um, I want uh, to do something quick, but at the same time useful to the project. And uh, I think that uh, terminology cleanup uh, could be a good example. So here you can see that uh, there is a link uh, to Epic for aging terminology cleanup with open issues and contributor guidance. So we can start from here. And here um, there is a number of uh, newcomer friendly issues. Let's just uh, launch uh, this uh, GitHub query. So basically it uh, searches across uh, Jenkins CI GitHub organization uh, and uh, looks for usages of uh, slave terminology. Uh, by default, we want to clean up everything. Still, uh, there are some scopes. So for example, here you can see that uh, some usages are related to code and to API. So these parts are quite challenging, but there, is, uh, there are also documentation parts. So for example, I can just uh, filter by markdown and it will show a lot of documentation. So here you can just browse from, through that and we can uh, find a component which we would like to update. So for example, uh, there is a copy to slave uh, plugin. So let's take a look at that and um, see what's the current state. So there is a um, short um, uh, page here which basically summarizes um, what's uh, the plugin about. And uh, there is also a wiki page. And I guess wiki page hasn't been yet migrated to GitHub. So it's something Mark will be talking about later. So yeah, uh, this is the actual documentation. But let's imagine that we want uh, to clean up uh, this repository because yeah, it's a valid uh, request. And here, let's take a look what's the current name of the plugin. So the current name is copy to slave we can assume that it should be renamed uh, to copy to agent. Now let's uh, try to create a pull request for that. Okay. Again, I will be just using the GitHub web interface. So no ID needed, nothing uh, except uh, your GitHub account. So here you basically look for all the usages of slave in the main page. And we can just replace all of them. So this one we can attach because this is wiki. Uh, this one, uh, I guess we can just uh, remove it because it's 2020. Uh, the source code. Uh, yeah, so it's now only on GitHub. Uh, yeah. So we cleaned up some uh, references. So uh, what else we can do here, for example, 
uh, okay, let's keep it as is. We can uh, update it more, uh, but uh, we wanted to just uh, rename this. So this is what you are able to do for now. And uh, here we can uh, say that uh, clean up uh, slave uh, references. Mm, okay, so this is uh, my first patch. Mm. Just submit it and uh, create pull request automatically. So here, uh, so uh, we need to mark it for October first, so that uh, uh, we can discover it on the organization level. So I just put October first plug, and I guess that's it. Okay, and this. Uh, so again, uh, read me. Okay. So I created this pull request. And yeah, basically, this is already a contribution uh, which uh, uh, may help users uh, visiting this page. And uh, we can assume that it's a valid Hacktoberfest contribution. So, what will happen? Uh, it's not you doing that, it's uh, Orc admin handling that. Uh, we put Hacktoberfest accepted pull request so that uh, the pull request becomes eligible for Hacktoberfest. And that's it. So we have created our first pull request, uh, which does something uh, useful. Obviously, you can find uh, much more examples for that in your plugins. I just wanted uh, to show a concept of how you could do that. Okay, and let's see. Um, there are more ways to contribute. We talked about featured projects, we talked about queries, uh, but actually we are not limited to that. Uh, there is a page called Jenkins.io slash participate. Uh, it integrates information about uh, all the ways uh, to contribute uh, to the project. And if you are looking for more uh, opportunities, please refer to this page. So uh, there is uh, guidance, for example, for uh, contributing code, contributing documentation, where you can find more references, more uh, queries, references to other ongoing projects. So for example, um, in the documentation seek, uh, there is number of, pro of projects that are related uh, to the Jenkins documentation, and you can find it here. It's also linked from the page somewhere. So yeah. For example, Jenkins on Kubernetes, plugin site integration, plugin documentation, user guide rework, etc. So there are more areas where you can contribute to and you can explore to these guidelines to find uh, these projects. Or you can just ask uh, us in the Gitter chat and we will be happy to help you. Okay, uh, more advanced uh, projects, yeah, basically any pull request to any Jenkins GitHub organization uh, accounts. Also, you can contribute to upstream projects. Jenkins uses uh, hundreds of different uh, upstream projects. Uh, uh, honorable mention uh, Apache Maven, including tools, uh, also many other Apache projects we use in our code base, uh, same basically for many other projects uh, which are part of the Java ecosystem. Also, if you want to develop .NET code, we don't have .NET code right inside the Jenkins organization, but there are projects we use like Windows Service Wrapper for managing Windows services. So you can take a look at that. You can also work on your own repositories. For example, just create a demos for Jenkins, do some uh, experiments, for example, with Jenkins configuration as code, with uh, Helm charts, with uh, Jenkins Kubernetes operator, and these other new technologies available in the Jenkins project. And uh, yeah, you can mark uh, these repositories for Hacktober first. You might, can make them discoverable for others so that uh, they potentially help other users. And of course, you can also patch your Jenkins pipelines, especially if they're in open source projects. Uh, in addition to that, there are CDF projects. Uh, you can also take a look uh, at them. So continuous delivery foundation uh, participates in Hacktober first as well. And uh, if you want to find more information, please here are links for all the uh, CDF projects. So here you can find the guidelines, et cetera, for all of them. Okay, uh, that's it from me. And if you have any questions, uh, please ask in the chat. Uh, we will uh, answer them. So, 
I think we should uh, slowly move on uh, so that uh, we can uh, go through the entire agenda. Okay. Thank you, Oleg. Jonathan, you ready? Let's see, Oleg, I think you need to continue sharing your screen okay. so that your the slides are visible. That's great. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, okay. let me do that. Can I start? Yes, please, Jonathan, go ahead. Oh, okay, okay. So guys, uh, hi everyone, I'm Jonathan Morales from Brazil. I'm a software developer and uh, I I love when my daily tasks can run for the Intel, so because this I'm here at Jenkins. And uh, I have been a volunteer at Jenkins uh, starting early 2020. So I'm quite new here too, as you, uh, I started uh, just a few time ago. And I'm here today to show you how we prepare everything to offer you a better experience on a hack server test, okay? So uh, first to everything, I, I would like to say thank you for you all. Uh, we already received several PRs and a lot of new members joined to our community and this month. And they, those PR has really helped us to improve our documentation and offer a better experience to our members uh, community too, okay? So just to show you a big picture uh, about our preparation, uh, we'll show you some charts. So as you can see, the yellow, uh, big yellow uh, slice of the chart show uh, uh, all uh, issues uh, we have to work uh, early August, okay? Mm -hmm. So we mark and others map mm -hmm. uh, all issues, mm -hmm. uh, all pages mm -hmm. from the older week we, we have. Uh, and how uh, they are important based on uh, visit page, okay? So once mapped, uh, we work hard to uh, open all issues on uh, um, GitHub. So uh, can move for the next chart, please. Uh, so in the next chart, uh, you will see the difference. Uh, uh, hello, Mark? Oleg, I can think you need to go to back one. Any? Sorry, sorry, Jonathan. Uh, I think Oleg, you need to go back when this is. Yeah. Oh no, that was no. You were right. August twenty twenty. You were correct. Sorry. Next slide was, yeah, all right. was where we're going. Exactly. There we go. Okay. So this is the one that shows so, progress. Uh, now, yeah, in the news chart, you can see uh, what we work to finish some issues. So the green one show every issues we already migrate for the new site, the jinx.io. And the orange uh, slide shows how have, uh, many available issues we have. So uh, since August uh, to now, we have almost uh, uh, 150 issues to work on it. And uh, maybe less now because uh, we already close on them uh, because they after October fast. But uh, the most important is almost uh, 50 uh, uh, items as uh, that as good first issue. So there is two important points here. The good first issue is uh, uh, it's where you should start to contribute to Jenkins, okay? So if you need to learn how GitHub works, so if you need to learn about process and uh, you want to know how Jenkins work and how uh, get best from the, the software, and uh, the documentation is that, that start point to you, okay? Uh, so for that reason, I start work on uh, Jenks documentation too. Uh, I'm a software developer. I can work for another plugin development, another thing, but I choose uh, documentations because yes, it, okay? It's a, a good way to pay back for community for everything documentation we already uh, see on the internet. So, uh, it's good to you, it's a good uh, place to stay and uh, to start, okay? So just go to GitHub, so to go to the uh, main repository of Jenkins, go to Jenkins.io and click, click on Issues tab, okay? So there uh, you can uh, see all issues we have available to work and click on the blue one uh, inside and it's, uh, it's right uh, good uh, first issue to start, okay? So here in that slide, we have, have a, a print from a sample of issue, okay? 
So once you click on uh, issue to set uh, UX work on, then you just uh, write a comment. So just say on the comment, I work on it. I would like to work, okay? So there is a, a lot of good content there. So when you pick an issue, yeah, all you need to start to work with put on that. But if you need some more assistance, uh, feel free to to ask for help. Uh, we stay there to help you, okay? So inside this, uh, each uh, issue has a video recorded by Mark where you can find how to work on documentation and how to migrate a page from uh, the old site to new one, okay? Uh, there is a lot of other information too, so take time to, uh, your time to read on them. If an, uh, you find any questions, just send to them. So the issues good first one is your start point, okay? Um, another important thing to know is the another 100 issues it's more complex, but not so complex at all. So once you watch the video inside the issue, you are uh, you are ready to work on Jenkins documentation and migrate the, the page. The only difference before uh, between the first good first issue a, a normal issue, it's because some of our contents are it's it's not up to date. So we need to rewrite the documentation update the content. So in that moment, you will learn more about Jenkins and contribute with community, okay? So uh, to do that, uh, you need to set your environment. And this event, Vlad, will show you the next session, how to set your environment, how to create uh, your first PR, and, and uh, how work in Jenkins documentation. So everything. Uh, you need to know to start Vlad you show to you. Well, uh, so uh, at the end, uh, I hope uh, you all uh, reach out uh, new for PRs to, to earn your t-shirt or even better to first to plant a new uh, tree on forward. Uh, it's important to stay uh, alert about nature uh, and a lot of things is uh, related. Uh, as I said, I'm from Brazil, so here we have Pantanal, we have Amazonia, and uh, I, I can uh, tell you guys we need more trees to stay in the health uh, world uh, to our children, okay? So thank you guys, thank you for your time, thank you for your participation, and uh, I'm done here, Mark. Thank you, it's on you now. Thanks very much, Jonathan, that's wonderful. And yes, the plea for more trees is a good plea. That's the right thing to do. Exactly. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. I think we're ready to now switch to the, the next presentation. Or Oleg, were there other items you wanted to highlight here as we were, as yeah, Jonathan took us I just uh, wanted to briefly highlight the contributing guide to answer the question in the chat. So mm -hmm. the most of information we present today is already available uh, as contributing guidelines. And for example, for Jenkins website, that is contributing a doc inside the, the repository. And here you can find uh, all information about uh, how to contribute, how to address particular use cases, for example, migrating documentation. This is what Jonathan was referencing. But if you want to create new one, if you want to create tutorial or write a blog post, you can also find the information here. Uh, and uh, same for development needs. So a lot will present how to do it. Uh, but uh, if you want to have more information, you can also find them on this page. And I find it particularly nice that I can actually read the source code for those ADOC files. If I've got a question about how to do something, I can use them as a pattern to do something else. So, excellent. I think we're ready next for Vlad. Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Mark, for uh, letting me talk. Let me share my screen first. and. Uh, see if I can do this. Um, let me know if you can see my screen. We can. Thanks very much. Okay. Well, uh, let me show, uh, well, this is our visual code. This is ID, one of the popular IDs 
which uh, people are using, uh, but nothing that I will show will depend on this ID. So nothing is uh, dependent on this specific uh, development environment. And if you have just terminal, if you have just Windows command uh, screen, like you feel free to use this. It is just convenience to have in one uh, development environment, editor and uh, terminal thing. So for, for my own benefits, I prepared this uh, readme file, which is in Markdown uh, uh, syntax. And uh, it is just convenient for me not to forget everything that I would like to talk uh, to you about. And it is possible to view this in, uh, like, like in the web. Uh, well, the first thing that you want to do when started contributing, of course, and I'm uh, talking about just contributing to uh, documentation. You go to our documentation website, uh, which is Jenkins.io and Jenkins Infra organization, and you look for issues. Uh, and well, I specifically for this uh, well, demonstration, uh, picked up one of the issues which created myself and it is fixed terminology. Uh, one of the uh, projects which uh, Oleg highlighted in his uh, presentation, but it regarding only documentation part. So you click on this issue and it describes exactly what needs to be done. Uh, it needs to change the whitelist uh, to allow list. This is new terminology that we're using in uh, developer section of documentation. Uh, uh, and it presents all files that needs to be changed. Links to all these previous presentations. You can go through this and uh, browse them as well. And it mentions a very important feature, uh, thing. It is accepted that documentation change may precede the user interface or code changes. So you can change documentation without worrying that the code is not changed yet because as well, uh, some people may know that code a little bit more difficult uh, to change that documentation sometimes. Uh, so, uh, let's uh, uh, watch it. In case if you hadn't done this before, let me a little bit shift my screen. Uh, first thing is you need to fork, of course, uh, if you hadn't done this before. Fork this repository to own. I had forked this before. Uh, so, uh, here is my fork. And after that, after you fork this, you just need to clone this documentation to your own repository. This is the copy button. You just copy this and you can use different, well, methods protocol. Right now it is available uh, using GitHub CLI, which GitHub recently introduced, but just SSH is also possible to use. And you copy this, uh, 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 well, uh, copy this, uh, Stream. And after that, you just uh, let me see in which repository I'm. You just use git uh, clone, and after that, um, just cut and paste this copy, copy uh, SSH key command. And I had done this before, so I'm just uh, not doing this. And after that, you cd to Jenkins.io, and this is a documentation website. Uh, and it exactly, well, I'm doing exactly what is written in this readme file, which in case if people want, I can share this, but this is targeted specific to this, uh, to fixing this uh, issue regarding terminology. Now, what is important, and this is usually uh, what I'm doing, when I'm looking at this, I would like to be in sync with the master branch, my own repository. And this branch is even with Jenkins Infra Master. In case if it is not, well, there are two simple commands which I organized in like git sync uh, 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 shell script, which allow you to make sync up with the master repository. Very, very easy. And after that, what um, you want to do is just let me see in which branch I am. Okay, where the master branch. And so what we can do, we can do git checkout uh, minus b uh, and well, x dev doc. And you can uh, like uh, put any name for your new branch and uh, just try to match what you are going to do so people will understand, easier to understand for those who will review your uh, contribution basically and your fix. 
Uh, and uh, minus B means that you are just creating right now and it will copy in case if you have, you just do check out. So we are switched already to this new branch and uh, we're already there. Now we uh, uh, go replace whitelist with allow list for every file in the selected set of files. And of course, well, I uh, opened all these files in my editor uh, and uh, here they are. And again, just to make sure that you understand, we are taking all these files from um, uh, from this list because this is very detailed written actually uh, issue. Sometimes it is not so detailed. Sometimes it is like uh, 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 yeah, uh, but it depends. Uh, so uh, uh, we are going to this specific files. Let's start from this like last uh, last uh, issue. So we just do search for whitelist and we'll try to uh, replace it with uh, allow list allow list and you see there is only one uh, thing which we need to do we just click enter it is replaced uh, and uh, another thing allow list replaced and uh, it is modified here. We'll go to another file and just do the same. It is uh, two um, occurrences of this, just replace them both, both. And for this one, at least, and it is modified, go to this file and so on. Basically we can, uh, well, uh, just see how many here are, allow list. And you see, this is everything in, not in the code, it is in the documentation, which can easily be replaced. And well, there is no problem in doing this. So we will replace this one and let's go to this action. Uh, how many, just one occurrence. Oh, uh, here we go, we replaced it. Whitelist will allow this. So we are modifying basically documentation. Now there are like several more files, let's go here. And here we have this, well, plugin whitelist. And uh, I'm not sure that we are able to replace this because we'll break some links. Let's go to this one. Uh, we have here 85 occurrences. Well, let's uh, uh, just see what we have, whitelist, and there is link. We can open this link and see what is all about. Just a moment, let me see. Uh, uh, it doesn't bring us anything. Uh, okay, but uh, let's go for next and see what we have here. Well, it looks like most of this is related to the code. Most of this is related to the code and well, uh, you can see that it is like the name of the uh, file, Java file here and well, uh, if we can start like modifying this right now, uh, it is a little bit more complex. Uh, well, I would suggest since we are talking about documentation, let's just don't touch the code at this point and stay with the condition. Let's go back to this, uh, uh, to our IDE and uh, we'll make sure that we already changed these files. And what we can do right now, we're still in this branch. We're going to, uh, uh, well, execute this make run command and then we're going to switch back to uh, switch back to my readme file. Uh, here it is, and we're going to make run. Uh, and this is make run in this make file. And this is how you uh, run your, um, well, build uh, your local uh, site ID. So it will create, uh, build the entire site, and we'll start uh, Docker container, instantiate Docker container and it will start it on uh, local host 4242. And you can like, uh, if needed, change this port, but I would not recommend for new contributors to doing this and go inside because 
this was written by file, but really smart people, and so they knew what they were doing. So we just can use uh, as it is. So it is executing this pipeline, initial uh, Jenkins file in this repository, and it will start this. Let's try to open this and see if we'll be able to, not yet. Um, so let's go to this. It will take some time executing pipeline. So it's still trying to do all these things. And here we are. So it's like started this. Let's try to uh, go back and reload. And we can see that we have, uh, we have this uh, actual, uh, our own site, local host, and we have it here. And so we can, um, for instance, let's see, you know, we change this plugin site doc. And I guess plugin site doc, it is in developer guide and uh, tutorial. Oh, no, tutorial, it is somewhere else probably. Oh, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. And it is reference documentation, maybe. Plugin side. Here it is. And oh, let's look for what? List. We didn't find it. What about allow list? Allow list. Here we go. So this is what we changed. And uh, we can, again, just click on this and see that it works. And here you have this, uh, uh, well, it goes to another site, Abrey Center 2, and see, you can see a uh, whitelist here. And well, it gives you some clue of what can be done next. So when you start doing some changes and you start doing some pull requests, you will get understanding, well, this is how I can just continue contributing and it is very easy. So, uh, well, it's uh, what's interesting about this that it is, uh, uh, well, uh, with this site, uh, uh, it's a uh, very kind of interpretive mode. So in case if you will change anything here, uh, it will modify the site as well. And so you will just, uh, for instance, if you go to ID and you want to change the plugin site uh, and you want to change, for instance, here, put something like Jenkins, uh, save it, go to this site, refresh it, um, and you will see Jenkins plugin site. And so it is very easy. You will see what uh, kind of, uh, what it changes, what you will get, basically, and you don't need to restart, which is very, very valuable. Let's uh, like go back and remove this, save it again, so we'll restore this. Uh, okay. So now uh, you already changed the verified lead, just simple uh, sanity test on all files uh, well, that your changes work. And so you can just easily after that uh, go back to your ID. Let's uh, stop this. Yeah, let's stop this for now. Uh, we are stopping this Docker um, container which was executing right now. And let's go to, so I will not forget readme file. Uh, and we can just start uh, uh, contributing to this. Uh, so we will do uh, this git status. It will show what are we added. So we can just git add content. And again, do git status, for instance. So all our four files have been added. And we can just do git commit uh, minus m. And we can, uh, oh, I put fixed terms. Uh, yeah. So we fixed terms in dev section of doc. Something like this. And we'll do this and after that we'll do git push. Uh, oh, I already uh, all, always forget how uh, you need to do this correctly. It will just remind us and you're trying to push it to your uh, to your own 
uh, uh, repository. Now, after that, you can open this. It will show you what to open. And you can uh, here uh, just uh, it's possible to mention that well you some files uh, we hadn't touched some files since will require um, modification of code. And because of our code modification is a little bit different and we can break a lot of uh, links and so let's not do this right now. So we just mentioned this, create pull request and after that, uh, well, you'll see how uh, like everything is automated process kind of, except reviewing. Of course, uh, uh, you will just basically wait and uh, see uh, what is the pro like how the checks go and uh, what's interesting that some checks haven't completed yet, but there is process already going on and your testing start and uh, well, you know, Jenkins project is using uh, Blue Ocean plugin and just you can go inside and see how everything is uh, uh, well going the process. So basically after that you sit and wait until uh, you will receive approval and probably most likely you will receive it in email. Uh, and uh, well, I just go inside details what you need to do to fix one specific documentation. I haven't shared that reading me file, but I would be glad to do this in case if needed. So you, well, you know how easy it is to do, how easy it is com like to contribute to the Jenkins project in documentation area, Alex showed in different other areas, Mark, will show uh, how to do transformation from the wiki page. So you're welcome. Uh, please start contributing and well, you will have a lot of fun doing this. On this optimistic note, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Vlad. Thanks very much. Yeah, there is a question in the chat. So one more prepares. So the readme file you shared is uh, very helpful step-by-step -step guide. Is it available for everyone? Or is it something uh, you use just for the presentation? Uh, do you want me to answer, Alec? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, I prepared it just for my presentation, but I would be glad to share this and uh, uh, just we can discuss where to put it and I will be glad of course to share this. Uh, just, yeah, it's not private. It will not be private. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And there is another question which is rather related to Jenkins core. So uh, from Naveen, I'm getting that uh, Jenkins core is quite stable. So the most of work happens in the plugins. Uh, so there are two answers. Firstly, indeed uh, the most of work happens in the plugins. Uh, but uh, it's not just because of the Jenkins core stable, but it's because of the, the most of the Jenkins functionalities in the plugins. Jenkins has a framework system and uh, yeah, it's, uh, Jenkins core is uh, related to small uh, implementation, uh, which um, implements uh, core foundation and APIs for Jenkins. But all the business logic, all features, uh, the most of web interfaces, etc., they happen uh, in the plugins. Uh, so that's why uh, it's a good uh, area to contribute, especially since uh, any plugin is basically a semi-independent project uh, with a smaller code base so that you can actually ramp up and explore them. Yeah, uh, I, I so like I like that observation as one of the one of the genius elements of, of the Jenkins project is it's got lots of small projects where individuals can contribute very effectively with, without worrying about disrupting larger organizations or big monstrous things. So wholehearted agreement, plugins are a wonderful way for you to contribute and help. Yeah, no, we have some plugins which have a size uh, quite comparable to the size of the Jenkins core. Okay, uh, Jenkins core itself is not uh, quite stable in terms of, well, it's quite stable uh, operation wise. But code-wise, it keeps evolving. There are new APIs integrated. There is a lot of ongoing work, for example, for user experience improvements and the Jenkins core and its APIs. 
So inside uh, this component, there is also a lot of work happening at the moment. Also all kinds of performance optimizations, etc. So if you want to explore uh, Jenkins core, it's also possible. So yeah, yeah this, uh, the code base of Jenkins core uh, is uh, first, it's much bigger. And Jenkins has uh, 15 years of history, which includes binary compatibility, etc. So the code is not straightforward in many cases, just because we had to retain binary compatibility for the plugins. Uh, but if you want uh, challenging tasks, uh, you can definitely take a look at the Jenkins core. Also, there are many areas which are quite isolated, uh, which you could try. Now, I like the question from Naveen, Naveen Sundar about any plugins recommended for a, a new Java developer. And, and so I have a shameless self-promotion technique, contribute tests. Most of the plugins would benefit from more tests. And if you as a new developer would like to learn something about the development experience, writing a test inside of an existing plugin is often a very good way to explore, oh, how does this work and why does it work that way? I spend time in the debugger, watching my test, watching that I assert correctly, and that teaches me more about the code embarrassingly than most other activities. That, that time developing tests is quite helpful. So for a new, a new Java developer, help us write tests. Right, of course, uh, there are many newcomer friendly issues submitted. Also, um, there is a lot of refactorings available uh, because yeah, in Jenkins, we largely use Java 8 now, uh, but yeah, a lot of the code was created before, so there are improvements you could make there or maybe contribute uh, to static analyzer cleanups. Uh, but yeah, writing new features also, there is a lot of opportunities there. Check out uh, the existing uh, tickets. There is a lot of small things you could do. Now we've got we've got a question. Where are issues that I can work on? And I think this might be a good excuse to highlight the newcomer friendly issues table in the Jenkins in the Jenkins page. Would you be okay, okay if I share it briefly, Oleg? Uh, yeah, uh, you're doing the presentation next anyway. Oh, so good. Please. Okay, so let me let me do that. I think I think I may skip that presentation that I was thinking of, but I just like to show this as a way to highlight what um, what they can see. Just a minute, let me get the right thing so that I can bring it on screen. And this is, at least for me, it was a good insight of, oh, look what you can do, yeah, and look at the places sharing. you can contribute. Yeah, here it comes. So sharing screen now, and you should all see a web page. So this is a page that shows the newcomer friendly issues in the Jenkins JIRA bug tracker. And you'll see here, there are 63 bugs listed for the Jenkins core that are newcomer friendly. There are 14 listed for the Git plugin, 27 for warnings NG. Now those two plugins that I just mentioned have very high usage in the Git environment, in the Jenkins environment. And so if you contribute a fix there, you're contributing significantly to help the project. So this friendly issues table is, is a nice, easy way. And I'll paste the link to this into the, uh, into the chat window. Now, the next question was, is anyone available to guide a new dev? And the answer there is we've got the chat channels that will happily help uh, new developers. We've got the Jenkins dev mailing list as well. Uh, both are willing and ready to assist. Now, yeah, Oleg, I'll send the links uh, to the chat. Thank you. Now, I'm hesitant to go beyond the hour that we had originally allocated. Oleg, do you think it's okay for me to spend time doing a, a plug-in migration or should we call this a pause, stop the recording and switch to Q&A? No, I thought it's one hour 30. Great, so, so no, let's go ahead. At least uh, this is what is in Jenkins calendar. Perfect, then, then I'm gonna go ahead and show, show how I do, I do a plug-in migration.
So one of the challenges we have is that our Jenkins documentation had spent the longest time in the Jenkins wiki. And that's a great place to edit, except that we had some spam challenges. So about a year ago, we started a project to transition from hosting the documentation on the wiki to hosting it in GitHub. This page that you see here highlights our progress. And I'm, I'm very pleased to show that we've, we've completed over 500 plugin migrations in the last year plus. That's really great. But we've still got over a thousand left to do. So there's lots of work to do to get the plugin documentation migrated into GitHub so that maintainers can maintain it more easily, so that you can, we can update it, so that we can deliver it with new releases. So how do we do that? Well, first challenge is let's find a plugin that hasn't been migrated yet. You'll see here on the status column, and if I just, I'm, I'm kind of lazy, I'll just page down and find an, a row that has, there's one that I thought I'd like to try this one. So here is the XUnit plugin. It's used, it's installed in over 19,000 installations. I thought I'd like to migrate that. So I open up the Jenkins Wiki exporter, jenkinswikiexporter.jenkins.io and paste into it the URL to that plugin. Now, that plugin's wiki documentation looks like this. It's actually quite good. It's got pictures in it. It's got a good, good content list, different insights, multiple levels of, of content. It's a very good piece of documentation on the wiki, but it can't be edited because the wiki is now read-only. So this export process, when I click that convert button, it will generate, it will read the wiki page, generate a zip file from the wiki page that includes the pictures as well. Now, I didn't want to wait for this for purposes of our demonstration. So, oh, and there it is. So when I open the zip file, you're going to see it's got the readme and it's got the docs, images that are my pictures. So there it is, helping me along the way. Now, what I did then was I copied that up to my development location, and let's make the text here bigger. There we go. So this is the XUnit plugin that I had forked. And I'm on the master branch right now. So I want to check out migrate a new branch, migrate docs to GitHub. And as it turns out, I placed the zip file in my home directory there, and I'm just going to unzip it in this. So what that did is unpacked the things that the converter did for me and placed them right here. I've got docs images, I've got the readme file, and if we look at the readme file, we'll see that it is markdown. Now there's, there's lots to improve there, but you know what? In this particular case, I can just say, git add everything. And now if I git commit, I have something already that I can push to GitHub and go look to see how does this look when I present it on GitHub. So migrate documentation to GitHub. And probably help if I say from wiki to GitHub. So that easy. And I'm going to push that. Okay. So this push and now it's ready for me to go to that branch. And I'm not actually ready to submit a pull request yet, but I would like to see how it looks. So let's go look and see how it looks. So we're going to ignore that and just jump right to my fork of this plugin, where we'll find my branch, migrate docs to GitHub, 
And if we look at the README file now, you'll see here is the translated documentation that a README didn't exist for this repository previously. And now here's this README that has hyperlinks in it. It's got the pictures, it's got content, and it, it all looks actually pretty good. Okay, I, me personally, I'd wanna get rid of some of the empty space here. I'd likely make, a, make an initial heading. So there are lots of things that I might do to further improve this, but this is already a pretty good first effort. And that pretty good first effort has transformed the documentation from read only on a wiki page to being able to read write inside the GitHub repository that the maintainers will be able to care for. So we've, we've made a main, maintainability improvement if we submit this pull request just as it is. So it's, it's that simple. And I'm gonna go ahead and risk annoying the authors of this plugin. I'm gonna start the pull request. I'm going to actually make it as a, as a, uh, oh, it's a, a draft pull request so that they know that I'm still working on it because I think there are some things I want to improve. And so I need to mark this as a draft. I'll create the pull request and lay, let's see, Oleg, help me, remind me, where do I mark this as a draft? There is a technique there. Uh, do you really need it if you want to get the reviews? Because the draft marks uh, the pull request as not ready for review. And at this point, I'm actually not ready to have them review it because I'd like to make a few corrections before they yeah, review then, it. Uh, yeah, on the right side, uh, there is uh, reviewers on the top, still in progress. Oh, on. there it is. Convert to draft. Thank you. Yes. So thank you very much. It's convert to draft, and I'm going to temporarily convert it to a draft so that I have the time to work on this before the reviewers get involved. But that, that's the, the basic concept. And this way you've seen how to do those kind of simple transformations. So I started from what needs to be done, this page that lists what's available as work. I exported the existing content. I did a little bit of terminal work here to, to package that and submit it as a pull request. And then back and I'm ready to ready to work on the pull request further, improve it, make it better, get it ready so that the, the reviewers will have access to something that I'm ready for them to review. That covered the part that I wanted to talk to and I think I can stop sharing. Now we've got a question in the Q&A about hey, can I start working on document migration? Absolutely. Uh, documentation migration is, a, is a, a topic that we need. We've got lots of issues in our, in our Jenkins.io site in GitHub issues that are specifically documentation migration tasks. Now, what we've found is that the wiki, as it's evolved over the 15 years or the 10 years it's been maintained, is not always current. So it's not, a, not always a simple trivial conversion from one format to another. It requires thought and consideration, evaluation and improvement as you're doing a migration of content from the wiki to Jenkins.io. Oleg, Oleg smiles, I like that, that's good. There, there are some stories behind those kinds of transitions that there are times they get complicated or where we need to have longer conversations about those details. But in many cases, it's quite straightforward. And it's uh, generally beneficial for the project. It's not just uh, moving from one source to another uh, for plugin documentation, etc. Uh, moving documentation to GitHub allows us to follow the documentation as code approach. When features, uh, changes get documented uh, along with changes themselves, which helps us to maintain uh, actual and version of the documentation. Plus, 
uh, yeah, we can also uh, automate the release flows. And now if you go to documentation of existing plugins, you can see that uh, documentation updates also referenced in uh, the change logs, uh, so that it, uh, they become uh, more traceable uh, for users. And yeah, of course, it's also good from the recognition perspective. But yeah, main purpose, it. yeah, main purpose is that yeah, now it's a really collaborative format uh, with uh, support for reviews, with support for versioning. Uh, and yeah, it really helps everyone in the project. Yeah, documentation as code really has been a very, a very nice positive. The things that I've interacted with, I've found that the documentation is significantly better now for plugins that have made that transition from wiki-based documentation into GitHub. They are more likely to update it, more likely to care for it and maintain it, and be willing to accept and consider pull requests that correct mistakes in it. Mm -hmm. And that, co that covers all the topic that I had. I think we've got a, a few concluding, concluding slides. If there are more questions, we're happy to have questions. So if there is no question, it's again, uh, we will uh, stop recording soon. And after the recording, we will grant everyone who stays online voice permissions so that you can ask uh, more questions. Great. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now. Oh, it's you. Yeah, I was just looking for closing slides you were referring to. Excellent. Oh, this one? That That's that's <laughs> the one. Absolutely. Okay, this one too. Yeah. So if you have any questions, please contact us uh, in this Gitter channel, jnkci slash Hacktoberfest. We will be happy to answer questions, uh, provide any guidance, uh, help to resolve issues, uh, debug something if needed. And yeah, thanks a lot for your interest in contributing uh, to the Jenkins project. And uh, yeah, we are looking forward to meet you in the community channels. So have fun. Thanks, Oleg. Thanks, Vlad, and thanks to Jonathan. Mm -hmm.